What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we are on the war path today, the path of war. It's a pretty well beaten path, I think a lot of people have decided to walk along it, including I think I see Sun Tzu's footprint over there. But anyways, I believe we are going to be on the war path today and we are going to do our best to wipe out everybody that tries to get into our face. So I'm going to release everybody from their bonds right now, if I can find anybody, and their stocks. Oh good, everything's getting laid waste to at the moment. We're getting hit hard. So we've taken hits at Tizmir. Well, I don't know. We're gonna have to pick a we're gonna have to pick a side right here. Basically, we gotta pick a location to fight at. And I think the way that I'm gonna go is we're gonna go left. Well, boss, at last I found you. Sanjar Khan has suffered enough, and he's pursuing peace. Let the truce with the Kyrgyz Kanate be concluded. There it is. And so now we have gained right to rule. You guys had mentioned I should get married, but I think that our right to rule, pretty much where it needs to be right now. We've dodged the opportunist. Let me see, actually. Right to rule, 99, so yeah, it's maxed out. We pretty much are the guy that everybody looks at and is like, oh, she should be king, basically. Or she should be empress, or queen, or whatever you want her title to be. Viscount. I always like that title. The Viscount. I don't know why. I think it was something about the fact that it has a V in it. It always just made me happy, and I can't really put my finger on it, but I will say this only once, Reland. Surrender or die. Plus, we have more guys than you. Just a little something to think about. Something to lubricate the old intellectual process. We have a lot of guys, you have very few. We have a lot of horsey guys, you have very few horsey guys. I mean, as far as horsey guys go, you don't really have any. Oh no. It appears as though they made a better run on me than I made on them. Oh, got a guy in the middle. That guy wasn't paying attention for just a second. He's staring at his iPhone. Just like, oh my god, I wish this battle would be over. Where's Flappy Bird? There we go. I played this card game on my phone for a long time that was like the most addictive thing ever. You like bred monsters together and stuff. It was ridiculous. Like I'm not even sure why I was that into it because it's really only just kind of like a light version of like Pokemon cards or something. But I got really into it for like six months and I played it a lot. I was in all the little competitions and stuff that you had to pay real money for. I was like, oh man, I'm getting a little too far into this. I'm spending money on things I shouldn't be spending money on. That's the point at which you know your gaming addiction is going too far where you're just like, well, I just spent $5.99 to enter some dumb online tournament. I think I should probably step away from this for a minute. And then I lost like in the third round and I was like, well, that was money well spent. Glad to see that that investment is going to come full, full turn. <laughs> Although I suppose there's an argument to be made that if you enjoy yourself, whatever, it's justified. Everybody should spend a little money on themselves every now and again. Because life is rough. I mean, I think the vast majority of people nowadays are like, very close to destitute. I know that I am. I mean, I don't know if it goes for most of us, but eh. You know, I think it's a combination of my natural laziness. Oh good, you're my prisoner now, Reland. You douche. Get in the cart. I have a cart. You can't see it right now, but it's behind everything. And you know... I think most people nowadays are kind of like living paycheck to paycheck. Every now and again, you gotta take like 10 bucks and just like have fun with it and not worry about the consequences. At least until the first of the month when you can't pay the power bill, and then you worry about the consequences. Once you're there, you're like, well, damn, these consequences suck. I'm going to consider them carefully. <laughs> I'm gonna go and I think I'm. I don't know if I should. We're at peace with them now. I'm a little concerned that Vagir's is gonna come up from the south. But then again, I'm not really, I think it's just one of those cases where I don't have enough people right now. I need to just sort of, let me talk to Plyce in his castle, and I'm going to let everybody off the campaign trail so that they can go back to their own homelands, and I'm just going to hope that everybody does the right thing right now. So I'm going to end the campaign and just let everybody fly. It says that they're all supposed to be following me right now anyways, but there is zero following going on. There's very, very little following going on. So I think, oh wow, they're really just running a train on Batsik right now. Batsik is not the place to be hanging out. It'd be the worst day ever. You get there at Batsik for a beer, and that's right when all the armies show up. They're like, whoop. Guess what time it is? Beluger? Where's Beluger at? My kingdom is so spread out that I don't even know what's getting beat up anymore. I don't appear to have anything named Beluger. Stop beating up stuff that I don't have. Oh, it's Bulabon. There it is. Well, no, that just got raided. Wait, what? I'm confused. I'm so confused right now. I don't know. I'm just going to hang out, and anybody I see riding around some of my castles looking conspicuous is going to get annihilated. Only 71 men in that castle, which makes me feel concerned. Like, why is the Lord not... 
being a good steward right now. Like, I've given you things that I require you to shepherd, and yet shepherd them you do not. See, like right there, Slezg has enough men to where I don't feel that worried about it, or at least that I'll have enough time to get there and help it if I need to. Die, Bulba. Oh, I couldn't get him. Couldn't get him. If I was him, I would give myself the last name Fett, and I would just be Bulba Fett. It would be awesome. Slezg is under attack one more time. By who? Like, invisible man-goblins? Like, really? Hell no, we're not giving you your lord back. Oh, they're fight there's Belgaru. Let's jump in on this fight to get ourselves some super free relation with Plyus since he's getting his ass kicked at the moment. And it never hurts to help your lords out when they're in a pinch. Although in a pinch of what remains the question. Like what if they're in a pinch of pleasure? Maybe they don't want to be rescued. Maybe that's not the way that the saying goes though. Stupid tree blocking my plans. I was trying to slash that guy in the face. The tree's like, no, make peace. Do not make war, feeble human. Your lives are too short. As that guy tries to murder me with a battle axe. Well, peaceful tree. It's the tree of peace. It's the tree's tree. We get everybody? I think we got everybody right now. Yep. And there is the cheer of victory. Sorry, peace tree. We just couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it today. Somebody had to die. And so we save Plyce. He's going to put us back up to... Oh, never mind. They will quail at our coming. I've never heard that saying before. It's a pretty good saying. The next time I do homework, I'm going to be like, You, Calculus, you shall quail at my coming. I'm just kidding. I already took Calculus. I already passed it. Don't need to mess around with Calculus ever again. Unless it randomly shows up somewhere. They're going to be like, mm, Take the derivative of this Subway sandwich you just bought. I'm going to be like, Oh, God. Sandwich Prime, go! So who is still raiding around here? Damn it. I'm so bad at defending my own lands. The eastern, I'm sorry, the western border is looking okay. I'm not seeing anything over here that's leaving me in a spot where I'm just like, damn, we need to do something about this. Is my party full at the moment? I should grab some extra guys just so I'm training something while we're out here. Oh, nobody wants to join the war. That's because it's wartime. They're like, nope, you ain't getting me. We need a draft around here. We're still making a sizable amount of cash, even though a bunch of our works are being sequestered, simply based on the fact that all of the tariffs and things that we get from Qdan and also from Ikemer are just like, oh, so much money. Yep, everybody's done. They're like, nope, we want no part in this. We've had like seven seasons of war and it is time for peace. Tell that to the Nords and the Vagirs, though. This wasn't my plan for them to invade. I was perfectly happy holding Kurgis in a corner and just punching them in the throat repeatedly. But no, the Nords and the Vagirs got to jump in like, we'll help you. We're totally on your side. This doesn't hurt me to like look around though and see who I can beat up on this side. They should lose Lords pretty quickly. B, by the way, I was going to say BT dubs one more time, but I feel like I've been using that phrase too much. Like every day in real life, I've been like BT dubs trying to sound all hip. And then I think I just sound like a 40 year old idiot every time I do it. So I should probably stop. Turagor is laying waste to Tizmir. Where is Tizmir even at? Tizmir? Damn it, Tizmir. If you weren't so good at hiding from me, I would come and find you. Oh, I ran them off. I rule. Yay for me! And we'll go ahead and beat up this guy because he's in our territory and every lord that we capture is one less. I probably should have sold that other one back for 3200 now that I'm thinking about it. It might also be a good time to think about what we want to take from Vagirs or what we want to take from Nords. Kura is a tempting target, and that would be a city that I'd want to take for myself because Kura tends to be pretty rich in the larger scheme of like all of the random developments you can capture. I remember Kura tends to make a lot of money. Got a lot of Nords around here. Oh man. Damn you knights. You and your foolish stopping in the middle of the road. There's no road here. It's all snow. Like, you know what I mean. It's a figure of speech. It's a turn of phrase. How can a bird be a phrase? Oh my god. That seems like one of those things that would be on Wheel of Fortune. Arctic turn of phrase. Yep. Like one of those before and after puzzles that nobody's ever able to get until they're totally full up.
Before and after is a tough subject. I still watch game shows. I wish game shows would make a comeback. Although I want like the Japanese style game shows where like Takeshi's Castle, for example, where people get injured in the course of like small amounts of money. Be like, who wants to win $500? And everybody's like, me! And then they're like, okay, jump off this cliff while we shoot volleyballs at you. And you're like, wow, that does not seem to be the type of compensation that I would require for such a dangerous activity. Like, <laughs> damn. This seems like a terrible idea. You are my prisoner now, to rigor. I also need to drop off these prisoners. War is very, very good if you're a slave trader. I'm making a lot of money off this situation. Not gonna go after Hiwani. What is his name? Hiwan. Not gonna go after him. I think I will drop off all of my prisoners so that we don't have to worry about them making a runner for it. We've still got Reland. I wish you could loot some of the lords you capture because they do have lordly mail and things like that that are worth a ton of cash. How many guys do we have in here to sell now? We've got to have quite a few. Given how many people we always have stopping off. I've also got time for upgrades, so let's do those before I forget again. Ten Huskarls. God, that's bad. I probably should... I mean, it's good now that I've noticed it, but it's one of those things that, like, it's bad that I didn't notice it for so long. Because your survivability goes up so much in between, like, being a Nord... Like, veteran to being a Nord Huskarl. Your survivability goes up just leaps and bounds. Do you have any... Anybody in here that I can recruit? Sure, Watchmen, come join me. Even though you're terrible, there's Marnid. And a book merchant. <laughs> reading. <laughs> reading. I think I'm gonna take some of these prisoners though and sell them because I just noticed we have a ransom broker in the house. And so since he's here, let's go ahead and raise the roof and make a little bit of money. We're approaching 300,000 dinars pretty soon, which is a lot of cash. I don't know if that's the most I've ever had. I keep thinking about some of these weird questions in Mountain Blade, like is this the highest amount of money I've ever had? Is this the best of I've done from like X, like activity? Very, very strange. I've never played this game for such an extended amount of time. Usually I quit by now because I like starting over. I like being fresh. The fresh map is more appealing to me. I don't know why. Once the map gets all hodgepodge like it is right now, where you got like this melange of color just running around everywhere, I hate it. It looks ugly to my eye, which is why I'm trying to unify it under the Red Faction, which is slowly growing. I mean, we've taken a pretty considerable chunk of the map. Our holdings extend not as far as... Our holdings don't extend... It, they easily extend as far as Vagir's. We hold about as much as the Serenids do as well. The Kurgits have largely been the benefactors of our land theft. Right? We've been the benefactors. They've been the... Well, they've been the... Donors, there we go, that's the word that I was looking for. Not necessarily benefactor, but the donor of all the things that I've taken. That's been what they've been about lately. You're trying to come back and raid my land again, aren't you? I think I'm just gonna sell them back, why not? Let's go ahead and beat up Highwan since it doesn't appear as though he's gonna be able to get anything done. High Wide Area Network. His name is an acronym. God, the things we think about while on the campaign march, it's largely because the activities we take in this game are really just sort of repetitive, and so I've always got to be thinking about new goofy things to talk about. Otherwise, you'd just be like, well, this is probably like the 8 trillionth battle that we've fought in this game. So, surprisingly, the series manages to still have a lot of views, which usually you'd figure by the 92nd episode nobody would care anymore. Like, usually by the 40th episode I'm starting to get really nervous and I'm like, eh, I don't know if this series is even worth it anymore, but Mountain Blade Warband, you guys are hanging in there. There's a large contingency of the NCE that is really just kind of into this series, which is a good thing. It's nice to have a series that's almost at 100 episodes and people still watch it in such a dense, like, population. It's very, very surprising. I didn't even expect to hit that Mamluk back there, by the way. That was kind of an accidental murdering. It was third degree in kind of a loose sense. If you're not familiar with the American penal system, I don't know how murder charges work in other countries, but third degree murder is manslaughter, basically, where it's like an accident. You don't mean to. Like, you're in your house and, like, your gun discharges while you're cleaning it and, like, kills your neighbor through the wall or something. You would get third-degree murder. I don't know what they would call that in other countries. Maybe murder without... It's not murder without intent, because that's second degree. Or no, murder... Second degree... So, basically, there's three degrees. First-degree murder is where you had intent and you planned it, and so it's premeditated. Second degree is where you didn't plan it, but you had intent, like you meant to kill them. And then third degree is where you didn't mean to kill them. It was a total and complete accident. And then if you do it with a car, it's vehicular manslaughter. I don't know if they subdivide it like that in other countries, but that's how it's done here. So it's first, second, and third degree. The third degree is sometimes called manslaughter, I guess is what they call it, kind of in passing. 
Although I don't know if third degree and manslaughter are specifically the same thing. I think they are though. But usually if somebody says manslaughter, they're talking about third degree is what I found. It's almost harvesting season. Oh, it's almost harvesting season. I didn't even mean to click on you. That was an accident. I was just kind of wandering around. I was like, damn it, did some king get me roped in? Let's go have a look around some of the vaguer territories before I get done talking about more grim things like murder charges. We'll go on over to the Kingdom of Nords. Yeah, Swati is not going to respond because they're in bitch mode right now. They are not in any position to be dictating the terms of combat or anything else. They really need to recover. 358 men in Ravad, and in almost all of them are marksmen. That would be like a churning meat grinder of death. Ravad would be a tough one to knock down without some kind of... Some kind of aid. I don't know. You can look at Dramug. 169 there. That's not quite so difficult. I'm going to go down to my southern borders and we'll take a look at how our outlying southern kingdom is doing. Make sure that nothing down here is unguarded or having people snoop around it. Those guys who like to float around like vultures waiting for you to slip up. Because those lords are always around. So we have 138 in Tolga. With Lord Gurlad making court right there. 28 men in Distar at the moment, although that's not very good. I had wanted to take Tolbuk and also Malayurg before we sued for peace, but unfortunately, that side contingency that rose up where we had Nords and Vagirs both simultaneously hit us made me just kind of... Yeah, we had to rethink our foreign policy pretty rapidly because fighting everybody was not a sustainable situation. We needed to be able to... Hanun and Ada Kaloon. Okay, so over there on the right. Let's go ahead and check it out on the eastern front. Radagir Castle has been, really, that's a bold move. Let's go ahead and get on out here and we'll see if we can hold it. Like a third grader in the back seat. Let me see what I can do here. If we can get there fast enough. God, stop with all this. I don't want to talk to you anymore about anything. Way too many. I'm going to run them back as far as I can to whatever castles they decide to come from. Over here, I do actually think that this is a battle we can win. Oh, and you got turned on. Look what happened to you. Should have gone the other way. We will charge this enemy, see if we can kill off these 30. We want to make them pay for coming towards Radagir. Although this is useful in a certain respect, because when you get attacked like this, it does give you a little bit of insight into how the AI is thinking. And so they're definitely thinking about the Western Front, obviously. I mean, I figured they were going to come from that direction. It's rare for the AI to sort of just run through your lines and go after stuff that's way in the back. They do it from time to time. But usually they like to whittle along the edges for a bit, and then once they're nice and comfortable and they feel like they've got their pajamas on, they've got their little bunny footy, bunny footy pajamas, they've got their slippers on and everything's looking nice and comfortable, that's when they tend to turn on you and go after all the stuff in the back lines. Now obviously we've got people attacking on our eastern front at the moment, but they're not trying to siege anything, so... Let me see if I can do any type of damage to... Ah, Swati is on Nords now, which leads them with an interesting opportunity to catch the enemy up in kind of a bear trap action. Got a little bit of a pincer going, which leads me to think that we're probably not too far off from maybe if one more person, they might get declared on by Rodox maybe now. The AI is just a relentless opportunist. So anytime an army sees that a neighboring faction is fighting two or more guys, which you'll see as a dog pile normally, which is why the AI tends to lose so much land in one big burst is because everybody jumps on them and then they don't sue for peace fast enough. Like I, as a player, I'm like, I need to sue for peace right this second because we just got hit by like nine dudes simultaneously. But let's go and help out over here. Get rid of the traitor Bulba who ran off. Actually, I sent him off, if we're being fair, but he was being kind of a douche to begin with. He was being kind of just mouthy. He was running off all the time. He talked about how the pork that I cooked. So I made some... It was ridiculous. I made Kahlua pork for everybody in the kingdom, and he had to run his mouth about it. And so I said, you know what, Bulba? You're out of here. I borrowed a phrase from childhood baseball meanderings. Don't shoot arrows at me with a longbow, you dick. Or I will ride past you ineffectually and not kill you. You gotta make sure that your threats are tangible. They'll be like, I will give you a mild cut as I ride by you at high velocity. 
And they will be like, oh, well that sounds unpleasant. You son of a bitch. What are you doing, Nizar? I hate you so much, I hope you die in that big pile of men over there. You bastard. The cavalry AI, I don't know what it is. They're like, there's my own side, let me run into him. Like, they do it so much, too. Like, look, it's my own lord. Let me get in the way. I love you so much, lord. Let me hug you in the middle of the battlefield with my horsey. And then there's just these random boulders right here who choose to betray me, even though I represent them. I represent you, boulder, because I'm a geologist. That boulder right there, it's got kind of an igneous look to it if I had to take a step. Well, it's tough to tell. It could be a sandstone, maybe. It's got kind of a sandstone, like an Arcos Aronite type thing going on. But anyways, it's tough to tell. Like a Quartz Aronite or something. I don't know. And so we've rescued Rolf from the hands of his ugly, smelly, beardy detractors. We've also taken some of their gear. How much food do we have left? Not a lot. It's not a good thing for us. Since, in my experience, soldiers love to eat. I'm back to Q-Dan and see if maybe I can find something here. Although I just bought them out a little bit ago, so I wouldn't hold your breath on it. I mean, you can hold your breath if you want. It'll make you better at pearl diving, but... Beyond that benefit, I don't think that it's really going to assist you too much in any other practical sense. If pearl diving can be considered a practical sense. Okay, so we've got that right there. We sold off all that stuff. Let's buy some more fishies. Good, good, good. I haven't had fish in a long time. I'm not a big fish fan, though. Just not my favorite dish. Anybody else that wants to get hired down in here? Caravan guard, get hired. It's fine. I don't even care. He could be anything. He could be a tier one troop and I'd still hire him. Nobody cares. Let's make one more pass around to all of these outlying lands. Are we full up? We're full up! That's the problem! Tizmir is getting attacked one more time by King Yuraglek, in fact. A very large force with King Yuraglek, 761. A force that I'm not inclined to think we can do anything about, and so this is one of those cases where the strong did what they will and the weak suffered what they must. I guess if I wanted to be more accurate, it'd be the strong did what they could and the weak suffered what they must. I had a political science teacher that was like, if 20 years from now somebody asked you what you learned in my class, that's the only sentence that I care about you remembering. The strong did what they could and the weak suffered what they must. And sure enough, it stuck. It's one of those weird tidbits that ended up sticking. So I think what I'm going to do now is I may break off this episode a little bit early. Yeah, let's do it. Two minutes, and eh, that's fine. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for another episode of Mountain Blade Warband. I always have fun with you guys hanging out and playing the game. Don't know how long, how much longer the series is going to run, just because we're kind of in between a rock and a hard place right now with regards to the neighboring factions. There's not a whole lot of low-lying fruit any longer. But we'll keep playing until I absolutely can just suffer it no longer. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody. And as always, a very merry hi-do.